Hey everybody, today what I want to do is I want to focus on what I think is the most powerful function call in Power BI. And it's probably something you haven't seen before. It's something that very few people seem to talk about, but I think it's one of the best features in the program. And it really lets you take the analytical capabilities of Power BI up a bunch of notches and do some really, really amazing things all within the context of um, the Power BI framework. So what I want to do is I want to show you a real world example from a site that I love. Um, that's the Excel BI nightly power query challenge. And it's run by a guy named VJ Verma. And, um, he puts out a problem every night and, um, then the community solves it. And there's a lot of discussion around that. And this is one from two weeks ago that really illustrates exactly what I want to show you uh, today. And what it is, is um, he, he has a challenge, and it's very simple in, in construction. He gives an upper limit, a lower limit, and an upper limit. And then between those two numbers, you have to calculate the number of prime numbers in that range. And it's quite, it's quite simple and straightforward in concept. It's a lot harder to implement than you think in Power BI, because um, although there are about 800 M functions, um, and about half that many DAX functions, there's no function in Power BI directly that lets you determine whether a number is prime or not. And so what we're going to do here is we're going we're gonna to delve into something called the data set call. And it's a way in Power Query to jump out of Power Query into R or Python, execute instructions, and then jump back into Power Query seamlessly and continue your analysis. And so let's let's basically take that data from the Excel BI challenge and let's work through it. So what we've got here is the lower limit and the upper limit. And the first thing we want to do is we see these are text. And so what we'll do is we'll take and we'll change these to, to whole numbers. And to do that, we'll just do um, a transform or I'm sorry, change type and then whole number. And now the next thing we want to do is we want to create a, a column here that is all the numbers between the, the lower and the upper limit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pivot that. Um, we're going to pivot that column to make a list. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go and we want to add column and do custom columns since there's no way to do this next thing directly through the user interface. So we're going to, we're going to create some simple M code here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a column called number, and then we're going to use the, um, the list.numbers function. And what that does is just creates a list of numbers. You can see it returns a list of numbers given an initial value, a count, and an optional incremental value. And so what we want is we want the initial, um, the initial value to be the lower limit. And then the, the count is just going to be the upper limit minus the lower limit. And then plus one to account for the endpoint. And we're going to do that. No syntax errors. And we hit OK. And what we see here is we get a list. And so if we click on that list, what we'll see is for this one, you know, it's 10, 11, 12, all the way up through the upper limit of 45 if we scroll down that far. Um, and that's a number, and that's what we want. And so let's let's actually uh, actually let's wait until we expand the list. So let's let's expand that list to new rows and let's change that to a whole number and now we're at the point where what we want to do is we want to we want to determine if each of these numbers is prime or not and as i mentioned there's no way to do that directly in um in power bi you could program in a um a bunch of steps um that would replicate something called the sieve of Aristhenes, which is a way of determining prime numbers um but we've got a much easier way to do that so what we can do is, and I'm going to use R here, but we could we could easily do the same thing in Python. And so 
in R, there's a there's a thing called packages, and packages are basically like kind of the equivalent in um, in R to custom visuals or external tools in Power in Power BI. It's just they're add-ons that you can you can build into the program in order to accomplish certain specific functions. And this site is called Metacran, and this is this is kind of a catalog of all the the approved R packages. Um, there are some that have not gone through review that you can also load in from directly from developer site, but there are over 18,800 active packages in R. And what this basically means is any analysis you would want to do, you can do within the program just by finding the right package. And so in this case for Metacran, we're going to take a look and try to find something that will um, determine whether a number is prime. So we go up here, we search for prime prime in the search box, and what we find here is the first one is a package called primes. Fast function for prime numbers, um, such as testing whether a number is prime and generating a sequence of prime numbers, and that sounds like exactly what we want. So now what we'll do is we'll jump back to Power BI and we'll, we'll make use of this primes package. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go here and say run our script. And this is what jumps us out of out of Power Query and into R. And what you see here is a pound sign, which is the the indicator for a comment. And what it says is data set holds the input data for this script. And this is actually magic. Um, because what this lets you do is it basically lets you say, okay, I can do all my data cleaning here. And I can I can structure my data and shape my data and add add columns and pivot things. And then as soon as I call that word data set, everything that I've done up to that point gets fed into R. And that is a, that is incredible because, and the same thing is true for Python. The data set works the same way. And what's incredible about that is you can take all the knowledge that you've got about Power Query and do all your shaping and then call R and not have to do or learn really any of the of the functions within R or Python that do that same thing. You can basically jump right into the analytical portion, which is exactly what we're going to do here. So what we want to do is in R, you first have to install a package. And I've already got this Primes package installed. There's just a command called install packages and you call that the package you want to install. But then there's a thing called library. And you don't have to really worry about this. I'm just explaining what we, we do here. If you want to delve into this in detail, we have two courses on the Enterprise DNA site by uh, George Mount, who's an author on both R and Power and um, Python in R and Power BI integration um, that are tremendous courses that will teach you all this. But basically what, what I'm doing right here is I'm just I'm calling the um, – the primes package that I'm basically, this is the equivalent in Power BI of when you um, bring a custom visual in from the app, from app source. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna have a table called DF for data frame. And to that, I'm gonna assign the data set table. So basically everything up to this change type in Power Query is is called data set and i'm just going to assign that to a to a table called df just for to make it easier to type things in and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to we're going to create a new column this is the equivalent of a calculated column in in power bi and we're going to say um df uh dollar sign which is the equivalent in in power bi of square brackets um is prime and this is going to be our our column name and to that, we're going to assign the isPrime function from the primes package. Um, and then DF and the, the column number. So all this is doing is it's taking this, this number column, running it through the isPrime function um, to say true or false whether that, that number is prime or not. And it's putting that in a column in this DF table. And then what we're going to do is at the end, we're just going to call the DF table. And we're going to hit OK. 
And we see that pop up here is the DF step, and we can now see our is prime column, which is false, true, false, false, true. And that's exactly what we want. And so all we need to do here now is we want to do a, a filter where we just take and we take out all the falses since we just want to count the, um, the prime numbers. And it's going to run for a little bit because we're crunching a bunch of numbers here. And when that's done, what we're going to do is we're going to group, do a group by and then a count. Okay, and that's finished. And now what we want to do is just go here, say group by. And we're going to, we always go to advanced just because it gives us more options. And we're going to group by here. We're going to group by the, um, the lower limit. And then we're going to add group for the upper limit. And then we're just going to create a, a column called count, and that's going to be count the rows. So for each lower and upper limit, we're just going to count the number of trues. And we hit OK. Let that grind for a little bit. And you can see that basically what we get is exactly the, um, the correct answer. Um, we just get our upper limit, our lower limit, and our count. And we can look here, it's 10, 10, and then 5,001 at the bottom. And if we go back to our original um, Excel BI challenge, you can see that it's 10, 10, and 5,001 at the bottom. So we, we've basically taken, we've constructed a new function using our called that function and solved this challenge really in what would normally take just a couple of minutes for something that otherwise would be would be quite difficult and i think that is just magic and when you when you factor in the fact that you've got 18,800 and something packages um, with a lot more other ones outside the cran environment um, this this adds up to hundreds of thousands of, of functions you can call all of which are free all of which are totally accessible right from Power Query. And so in the next video, I'm going to show you some additional things you can do with this. But I hope this really opens your eyes to what I think, as I said, is just an incredibly powerful set of capabilities within Power BI and something really worth really worth diving into and exploring. And the, um, the R and Python courses in Enterprise DNA really give you the, the opportunity and the option to do that. So I hope you found this as interesting, as exciting as I do. Um, as I say, I'll be back again with another video where we'll do some more exploration of this. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.